text and image. It's kind of a lopsided relationship. You can paint a word, but you can't exactly write a picture. Text hasn't always been welcome within the frames of Western art. In the tradition of Western oil painting, for example, where text did appear as perhaps a motto or the signature or a sort of inscription, it tended to be occupying a, a special sort of position. It was commemorative or ceremonial in a way. It marked a breach or a kind of lapse in the otherwise coherent, illusory space of the picture. Now, by allowing this, this breach, the work of art makes kind of a pact with the viewer. It's an agreement that the word will support the image rather than be a literal part of it. That is, it's sort of outside the image, even though it's inside it. The philosopher Jacques Derrida used the Greek word paragon to describe all of these things that support the image from outside it. So these might include the physical, like the frame, or the spatial, like this room, or the socioeconomic, like the apparatus of the museum. The paragon is kind of like the metadata on a computer file. It doesn't just name the file. It also dictates how the file is going to be opened and read, how it's going to be used. It's a piece of context that informs the content. So the relationship between text and image has had this special tension in the Western tradition, an uneasiness, perhaps. This is perhaps unique to Western art. It's certainly not something you find in the Chinese tradition with its beautiful calligraphy, nor in the Islamic tradition, which plasters the walls of its mosques with the words of the prophet. They often tell the story of modern art as a series of its attempts to get away from received textual content, the baggage of history, mythology, and religion. So you have a series of reductive isms. After cubism, we have suprematism, right through to abstract expressionism, formalism, and minimalism. There's no story in Kazimir Malevich's Black Square. In the formal meditations of Frank Stella, for example, literally all we're left with is paragon. Just frames inside frames inside frames. These days, it's totally normal to find text in the work of art. Today, people seem to communicate more and more with images, with emoticons, with video phones. But are they saying less and less? Is it any wonder, with today's language becoming so bland, so chanceless, thanks to the mass media, the PC police, the management consultants with their synergies? Is it any wonder that we return to the image? Language once rescued art from irrelevance. The question is, can art return the favour? <laughs>